For our next segment, we're going to go across the pond to Europe in what is really been a gigantic news week across the continent with gigantic projects, gigantic leagues, gigantic ideas coming out that is bound to shake European football to its very core if it ends up happening here. To break it all down is Jack Nuttall and Gray Osp. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. And Gray, let's start with you and Project Big Picture that has really rocked the English Football League to its core. So Project Big Picture is really just the essence of the Premier League clubs kind of reshaping the money to deal with this current pandemic. So the Premier League would reduce its clubs from 20 to 18, the EFL Cup and the Community Shield would be scrapped. And really, in my opinion, what it does is that it takes all the power and gives it to the top six clubs and the other three longest remaining Premier League clubs, which would be Southampton, West Ham and Everton. Although it would be good, though, for those smaller EFL clubs, because in order to survive this current pandemic, the payment would go from the top Premier League clubs. They would give 25 percent of their revenue to the rest of the EFL clubs. That would include the EFL Championship, League One and League Two. So instead of 4 percent revenue for those three lower leagues, you get 25 percent. So they would have the opportunity to really go in and try and take a share of that profit. So let's go over to you, Jack, because the European Premier League is something that came out this week, which would see really guaranteed matchups of the biggest teams in Europe on a yearly basis. What's going on with that? Basically, it's just another way of the big clubs wanting to make more money. Soccer is built around the idea of like wanting more money. So the bigger teams would come by into like this 18-20 league team, or like this team league, and they would just play each other and they would just Basically, just all it is is just ways of making more money for bigger games. They don't do, doesn't do anything. No one cares about trophies or records or anything. The European Super League, as they would call it, is just a cash grab. That's literally all it is. I don't see much of a point for it. The Champions League is already so successful in what it does that I don't see a need to do the Champions League and another Super League on top of that. It just doesn't quite make sense to me. But I do want to kind of go back a little bit more to Project Big Picture because... As, like, as Grace said, there are, there are some benefits to it because, like, as, as we know, with COVID and everything, money is kind of hard, hard to come around. And with all these lower leagues, it potentially wouldn't be enough. They, wouldn't, they might not have enough money to survive. Project Big Picture gives them that money, but also it takes away all of their other, like, benefits that they, they would get. And it just, I just don't see Project Big Picture being anywhere beneficial to the, the current standings. Now, let's say you're Plymouth Argyle. You're sitting in League One right now, and – the cash situation in those lower leagues are almost non-existent. These teams are just scraping to get by in a normal year, much less now. How much does it help those teams? And if it were to, were to go through, would the short-term gain be better than the long-term sort of fallout that would happen from it? I don't think so. I mean, yeah, we they would make the money that they need to survive. But in the long term, we would lose all of the freedom that the league and the league and all of the English leagues below the Premier League have to be like a soccer federation. You're basically taking all the power from the 90 teams and putting them all in the hands of six. And that's just not fair. The money is great and short term, it would be super, super beneficial, but in the long run, it would kill soccer. So Gray, on the flip side of this, since Project Big Picture was unanimously voted down by the Premier League, it looks like it's on its last legs. With these teams at the lower levels, how many of them could we see not survive the 2020-2021 season? I mean, I think there's a good chance that, I mean, you have some that may not survive, but I think they all have a good enough financial backing if you make it to that top level because it's a full-time football club and everything that they have at the club is put into it. But I think that maybe we could see maybe like a one, like, what we saw last year with Bury FC, who just completely were eliminated from the football league altogether because they couldn't make payroll and they couldn't pay off their debts. So, I mean, I don't think we see anything that drastic. But, I mean, if you are a lower league team with this Project Big Picture, I think you're looking at your chops, though, even though it didn't get put in. Because, I mean, you're looking at that all of that revenue. And for a team like AFC Wimbledon, who 75% of the club is owned by the fans, I think that you would – see enticing is that revenue but as jack said it's a freedom aspect again you're putting the fate of 90 teams into six clubs in your big six and their big picture is all about the money and again i don't think it just would end up long term well at all for any of those league two or league one clubs so jack what's the next step here where does uefa and the efl go from here unfortunately i think it just gets worse this is the this is like one of the first ideas they came out with and I think you see kind of more of the same plot points, like 
money and finances, continuing with more ideas. I don't think it's going to get any better from here, unfortunately. This is just the first idea of many. And I think later down the line, I think these big clubs are going to try to take even more power than they already have, even more than Big Project Big Picture was recommending for them. So honestly, I don't think it's going to get any better. I don't know what the current or what the best strategy going forward would be to help everyone, but I can tell you this, this is not it. We need to make it more equal for everyone so that we can keep watching the game we all love. Great. Is there a bright side to this? I think there's a bright side in the fact that it didn't really pull through. Because again, like Jack said, like we love watching these teams. And if it didn't go through, we still have that option to, you know, watch the teams we love. And we're seeing, we wouldn't see like the lower leagues kind of shout out in a little way. Like we wouldn't see like the lower half of the Premier League be financially handicapped as it would be if we did have Project Big Picture. But I think that, I think if the big six clubs really kind of relinquish that power a little bit and they stop caring about money and fan attendance and you can really just boost up the ratings because people are going to watch soccer. People love it. There's a big passion for the sport. I think that there is a bright side of this that it didn't go through. Well, soccer fans around the world definitely hoping that is the case. Thanks so much to both of you for joining the show. When we come back, we're talking who has the best atmosphere in college football. You're not going to want to miss it. You're watching one-on-one sports.